<laughs> what is up down and sideways all you beautiful individuals welcome back to league unlock eric and mark here with you beauties for a little bit of week three lec plus lcs power rankings and it's ah, it's it's a mercy killing when you're talking about team vitality in the summer split i'm going to preface all this by saying they're not dead yet for worlds they're still the summer finals championship where they maybe have enough points to still be in that obviously depends how the summer playoffs go but they're not dead yet but what a one and eight mark what what a sad fall off for these guys we we don't know what's going on behind the scenes but an absolute disaster for the whole split and it turns out Bo was not the only issue no, Bo certainly wasn't the only issue, but that doesn't excuse him from any of the problems that were going on with this Vitality roster. I think nobody is excused when you're looking at where the blame falls on and what happened, what went wrong for this big Vitality team. You look, you know, for almost every split, including heading into this one, you still were able to convince yourself and go, okay, I know things haven't worked out. It's been all over the place, but eventually, you're going to figure it out and there's enough talent that this is going to carry it and you are going to show this exciting, you know, high kill, high octane style in the LEC. And it never happened in this summer split. And we're looking across the board. You're talking about Bo. You're talking about Perks. You got to be looking at upset down in that bottom lane. This guy is supposed to be the best ADC in the LEC or the West as a whole in the region. Very far from it this week. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so many veterans on the squad. Perks and Upset are the easy guys to look at for this incredible level of underperformance, not being on the same page, not being able to communicate. Photon, especially these last two games, looked angry like he's just playing solo queue and is tired of his team feeding, so was just split pushing, trying to do his own thing and basically ignoring his team. And, I mean, I don't blame him for doing that, but that just speaks to how not on the same page the squad was. And, and it is the full cost is what you pay here right now for vitality not getting advancing and especially the way that it floundered out crashed to the ground you're not getting anywhere really in this summer split of course the most important one in the lec the way that the new formatting has worked out vitality you're the odd one out in the biggest dance of the summer and astralis in that nine spot just ahead of them they don't have all these championship points so they are not going to worlds they're split their season their year is over and it's the first week of july and this is where you start to see kind of the the consequence of not being able to fully realize fully capitalize on some of the positions that you were in earlier in the year looking at the astralis that was kind of blossoming blooming a little bit and then kind of getting knocked down figured out sorted out in the middle parts of those splits I don't think that that's what we saw here. I think we did see an Astralis that was still making some gains, still making some progress, mixed in with a couple of mistakes and missteps here or there. And unfortunately, with the rest of the landscape of the LEC, Vitality excluded, uh, enough teams got their acts together that it's an Astralis on the outside looking in. Next three teams on this list, SK and Koi, they show up in the last week to clinch that top eight and move on to groups. Mad Lions looking so good after a 4-0 start and now you know these two squads below them they had a solid week three five losses in a row for mad lions and i know maybe we should be bumping them lower than eight but i, I still have shades of what happened in the spring split and i'm still giving the defending champions the benefit of the doubt but they really did not look good in week three they did not look good at all nothing like obviously that 4-0 that puts them in the position to stomach that fall at that point and hold on in that position and what we're thinking is you know what might have been struggling might have been wonky but you know what are the other times that we've seen a struggling kind of limping into the playoffs mad lions every other split and you know what it worked out okay for them in those playoffs finding a way to either be a challenging team to knock out or being the team that's knocking everybody out like we saw in that spring split still on board with you giving that benefit of the doubt to this mad lion squad but they definitely need a turnaround and to return to that playoff form if they want to make any kind of noise going into the top five and i guess the 
the sacrifice was made for Vitality to sit at number 10 because now we got Excel advancing to groups for the first time, looking actually pretty decently, getting there across the board. Obviously, Peach is the guy you can look at. He had some suspect games, but overall has provided something that Xerxes was never able to give this squad. Yeah, and I think that that is only something that is going to be improving for this XL team is the way that you're able to integrate, able to utilize someone like Peach and what he has been doing and how he's been changing things. I think on an individual basis, you've not seen anything over the top that you're going, this is the guy, he's going to be, you know, this mega game changer. But he certainly has been impactful enough and enough of that change of pace where it is causing that effect rippling down through the rest of this Excel team where you're having those benefits, you're getting those advantages. Someone like Patrick still performing, still being consistent this split. We were hard on him. All these other splits with everything going wrong with Excel. Good to see that he is part of this bounce back. And the other squad here towards the bottom of this list, BDS, much like Mad Lions, waiting for that spring form to kind of come through and... You saw moments of it. You saw, even within one game, team fights against, you know, in the Vitality matchup where you see, ah, that's the squad that was going 12-0, completely obliterating their way through playoffs, still holding out hope that they can also reach that level. I think they can. I really believe that they can because if they just get on that same page, everybody's firing, everybody's ripping and roaring out there on the rift for this BDS team, and they're not taking those risks that are just way too much for them to be stomaching, too aggressive, too much to take over. That is the BDS sweet spot for me. Someone like Crowney being able to get that free damage in a lot of these team fights, that is your ticket for BDS. Team Heretics climbing to that top three spot and they had a tough week. They had both Fnatic and G2 on the schedule and that G2 matchup, one of the most bizarre moments you will see in a pro game when Vitao calls for the pause because what's deemed a bug with the Casio ulti interacting with him turning around and shouldn't have hit him blah 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 he ends up winning that 1v1 that he lost but the other kind of 4v3 that goes on Heretics won the fight before the Chrono Break they probably get Baron who knows how that game plays you try it again, and G2 ends up winning it. One of these rare cases where the pause actually damaged the team who called the pause. I get it because it's so juicy to want to take that pause and get that part right and get yourself the 1v1 kill. Take that advantage. Yes. It it's was what you're supposed right. to do as the individual player in that context. Oh, but knowing how it plays out, it was a bait. It was the trap. It is G2. Oh get themselves back in and they find a way to take it through still feeling very good about what we're seeing from this heretics team and seeing those signs i think there is that one little thing that is nagging you nitpicking and sticking out unfortunately that eyesore and that is heavy's gameplay in that top side there's a lot of room to clean that up and get that into a better more healthy shape even understanding that maybe it could be a weak side maybe you're not getting advantages blah 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 even understanding that you can get a better position for the rest of the team then to capitalize and provide their advantages, their firepower in that mid to late game to help close things out for Heretics. It's just crazy. When he came over, we were talking about this guy has all these spicy Trindamir picks. Can't wait to see him shake up the LEC meta. And now we're saying, get him on tanks. What is the best way we can hide this guy in any matchup? Uh, well, I mean, it's a necessity for this Heretic squad because certainly looking at not necessarily like the LEC is some big, incredible, you know, uh, top of the line gym for top laners. Still getting taken to task by the guys that are here in the LEC need to sharpen that one up if the Heretics are making to look a long run in the LEC summer split playoffs. Top two easiest ones to do on this board. It's Fnatic, even though they dropped the finale to SK. We get to see a Zareth mid out of Humanoid that actually looked pretty damn good. <laughs> and that ain't your solo queue, Zareth. That is the one that is making that damage, getting them stuns and hitting the ultimate shots. You love to see that sometimes you take your time between them, placing them here or there. Other times I tell you best way to go at it, just rapid fire, just spam. The ultimate's coming down. That way you don't even have time to think about where you're going to be going to dodge it out. Humanoid utilizing it both, making sure that it is the kills. Big time advantages for Fnatic. They keep this train rolling. 
This has been that revitalization that you waited so long for the Fnatic faithful. You are getting it now. You are having it with Razork, Humanoid, the two players staying through. And then of course the changes that have come through in the past splits and especially Noah and Trimby for this big one in, sp in, sum in summer, excuse me. That has been where this Fnatic team has truly come alive. In splits past, you'd be talking about Fnatic as the best looking team in the LEC. Problem for them, and you heard Dylan Falco say, this is the best regular season, best cleanest form G2 has had probably all year, which is a terrifying prospect heading into best ups. It's crazy because even watching that, even seeing that, and actually even agreeing with that from Mr. Dylan Falco, what I'm seeing on this G2 team, I think they can actually be better. I think that they can be even cleaner in how they're able to take these advantages and pressure them through in the LEC. I think right now with the way the meta has shaped up, what is available, what are the pro the priority picks, what you can do, this is great for G2. You've got it all across the board. Right now in top lane, you're able to play them in the jungle with Yike. You've even got the meta and plus some because you're able to break the meta with someone like Yike in the jungle for G2. And then, of course, Caps with all the creativity, all that damage that is available in that mid lane pool it is good times for G2. It does feel like peak form heading into the team that everyone already fears when you get into the playoff round of things. LCS side of power rankings, we definitely got some shakeups in the bottom five board and obviously it all starts with the three zero the ascent begins for FlyQuest back to contender status yes they were mostly beaten up on lower tier teams uh for a couple of their wins this week get the one against team liquid which is the impressive one but leaps and bounds better we're not gonna and automatically skyrocket them right back into top five but especially when you compare it with how things ended for vitality flyquest going an opposite trajectory a much needed opposite trajectory that the flyquest squad is able to deliver on the 3-0 for the week rebounding rocketing back into the direction that you want to be seeing this organization these players be able to execute on. And that is what we have seen from this FlyQuest team this week. You're looking at players like Vikla, Prince, guys that we have been very harsh on, demanding that we get some results from them. Spika as well. I think we've seen uh, enough of a turnaround this past weekend to believe that maybe it's not just, this is the weekend of the flash in the pan, you get that three. We feel like this is the real turnaround that we will see that true FlyQuest start to show up, show that true colors and true damage that they can actually bring out in the LCS. And even though they're behind 100 Thieves right now, another week close to that level of performance, they'll easily bump over them because it's not like we're exactly feeling great about 100 Thieves right now. I'm not feeling great about them, feeling a little bit better than uh, previous weeks and previous days about this 100 Thieves team. I think it still is obviously very clear that no matter what, no matter how quick it's going to happen, it's going to be a progress with someone like Quid in the mid lane, whether that's his individual skill and talent level, his comfort in the LCS or the communication or all three of them jammed together into an overstuffed sandwich that is on the plate for 100 Thieves. Still, both of those squads, you feel they've got the potential at least to be a squad. There's sunlight. Can... You're feeling some sunlight. It's not all doom and gloom. Yeah, and for FlyQuest, I mean, there's supposed to always be sunlight. The clouds were the scary part. 100 Thieves, you weren't surprised about it, but FlyQuest slowly getting back up there. Top five in the LCS. It's surprisingly the most steady part of the list. We got the same top five pretty much in the same order, and you got a squad like Dignitas still holding on to that five spot with teams like 100 and Thieves and FlyQuest sniffing around the corner. That's my Dignitas boys coming online and finally getting some good things happening in the LCS. And you know what that good thing is? It is that little bit of consistency, a little bit of steady for this team to, you know, be kind of building up yourself. You're still sometimes taking a step back, sometimes taking that step forward, but you are at least overall, when you're looking at these weeks for Dignitas, you are feeling pretty content and pretty much like they are still within this game this game of whether you see them either rise up a little bit more in this lcs show us that there is a little bit higher of a gear or they're gonna falter off into kind of that middling zone that's where we're at i mean all you gotta do is ride the dignitas rich and lowey train in the top lane okay that's the difference because i think we're starting to see that you know what you are not getting lcs rich you're picking up a little bit of LPL rich coming on in 
delivering these type of performances, the willingness and courage to go out and take something like that Alawi into what he is seeing on that opposite side, which again, a lot of people, a lot of casters, a lot of analysts have been talking about Alawi as one of these options. You got all these melee champions, you got everybody coming on into you. Alawi says, bring it on, bring it on. And Rich says it so and makes it happen for the Dignitas faith. Ahead of them, you know, Team Liquid, the anomaly, the enigma that is TL. You still have some games that you're left scratching your head. And then they put off this dominant performance against Cloud9 of all teams. And you get excited for this squad all over again. You know us. We're hopium. We're copium. We're always trying to find the positive angle on something. And seeing the what from Team Liquid and seeing how they took down Cloud9... That's what I'm choosing. I'm choosing that positive angle. I think the slip ups, the mistakes are absolutely legitimate things to talk about and worry about and work on if you are Team Liquid. But I am focusing in on how they took the task of Cloud9 team and were able to challenge and optimize and flourish at that point and taking the victory. That's my big one for me, looking at what is the ceiling for this Team Liquid team. If they can get it all together, if they can keep progress and keep improving, I think that we can see some more results like the ones that we did against Cloud9. And, you know, it was a competitive game against Golden Guardians as well, who's a spot ahead of them, who, again, we've been talking about finding that form. They continue to look real solid, even though they've looked good. And even though EG got absolutely stomped, pumped by Cloud9, the nature of best of ones, it's not enough to panic and all of a sudden put EG down to number five or barely in the top five. They got got by Cloud9, no question. So they hold on to that top spot, but I'm not panicking for one loss for EG. No, and I think when you are looking at that one, in, in, you know, specifically under the microscope, you can see a lot of the areas where, you know, one thing or two things kind of go wrong for evil geniuses. And then all of a sudden, you're not really at a position or a state in the game to challenge, to be able to try and be fully judged. It kind of is almost this game over, but we just got to let it play out type of situation is the type of advantage that Cloud9 was able to get for themselves. Of course, there's a negative of having your opponent get to that type of position, and that can be talked about. But still, it is overall, this is the evil genius team that nobody had expectations for. Nobody had the idea that they were going to be competing or even offering type of gameplay to the level they, they are. And I still feel pretty comfortable, pretty good about what they've shown us in the LCS so far. And for Cloud9, I know people are almost, I think, bored of Cloud9 looking like the best team in the LCS. But even though they dropped that game to TL, it's business as usual for them. Really fantastic. That, I mean, that game against EG, they camp the living hell out of bot lane. And Blabber on Kindred is almost always a treat to watch. The Blabber showing us that he is consistently top tier. He is the big fish in this LCS pond. That is that Blabber fish. Fudge taking care of business in the top side. Berserker, what else do you really want to say about Berserker? I don't know how how clear it's got to be. We've got some pretty good ADCs, actually, in the LCS. Berserker's just at a whole nother level. He is very clearly, to me, the very best. At one point, uh, we're talking about Prince, of course, and, you know, difference levels. And I think he could that, get you know, back there. He could. There's potential, sure, absolutely. But right now, Berserker is pedal to the metal right on that floor and saying, I ain't letting up at all in this race. I'm number one, my man. And they, he's number one in the bot lane. He's number one in the LCS with Cloud9. I'll tell you, though, JoJo's going to be angry for this rematch because the has had his way uh, in that Jace matchup that Ari was popping off. So JoJo and EG definitely probably already got that marked on the schedule when they get the rematch against Cloud9. But for now, it's them at the tippity top of the LCS rankings. That is it today, though, for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching. As always, we'll catch you on that flippity floor.